there's been a lot of noise on the internet about Kevin Samuel's death. You know, the internet is divided. We have the manosphere going strong, paying tribute to him. He even he even has this lawyer guy that's like, you know, I don't I haven't really watched those lives, but trying to, you know, I don't know. He's representing Kevin Samuels and all of that stuff. Then we have the Themisphere, <laughs> if that's what they call it. But we have the other side of the internet who completely hate him. You know, at the end of the day, whether or not people are rejoicing his death or not, I mean, hey, it's your business. Just because someone dies doesn't mean doesn't make, mean that their legacy is any good and any reason to celebrate them. So as much as I don't celebrate it, I'm not going to celebrate it. I'm not going to condone people that choose to celebrate him, you know, celebrate his death. I will say that. <laughs> I'll say this. You know, he posted a, a few weeks ago, no, just like eight days or so before his death. There's a video that I posted of him uh, saying that, you know, condoning domestic discipline, condoning men beating their wives. Best course of action is to slap a woman. And also that uh, people should ignore their children if they report sort of sexual abuse. And you have to defend your seed. You have to defend your child. Mm -hmm. but, but you also remember, you got two of my kids. And off rip, your protective instinct says everything, including those other two kids. And you know kids can say anything. They can, but you have to protect your kids at all costs. Then, then. But you have to talk. Then, no. What about those children we have together? Man, you're not right in this. Let's switch the situation. If I'm that child's biological father and she comes out of the shower and, and 10 years later, daddy looked at me a certain kind of way and, and I'm her biological dad, then what do you say? Why, why would you not question your child? Why would you not question your dad? Why would you not just say, girl, whatever, that's your daddy? Why would you just, why, why would you blow up her marriage? Why would you just believe her? Why would I just believe my daughter? Yeah, children lie. <sighs> I remember seeing that eight days before his death or a few days before his death and I'm thinking, this cannot continue. The first thing I thought was YouTube has to take down his platform. I felt that so deeply in my spirit. Like this is wrong. This platform needs to come down. Right, that's how I felt spiritually. And what I thought was interesting, <laughs> it's almost like when I did hear he was di he, he died, the first thing, the f first emotion that came through me was relief. You know, that was his impact. It was relief. It was relief that this rhetoric that he's pushing in the world would no longer exist through him. He would no longer be the vessel that could potentially ruin lives. Because imagine a child now that is being sexually abused. Their mother watched that video and now they do not get defended because the mother watched the video of Kevin Samuels telling her, ignore your child, children lie. Because as much as I don't think that Kevin Samuels per se, well, I, I can't say that, but he might not mean, he might not be that bad of a human being. He might not be that extreme of a human being, but that's just him. Think about the millions of people that he's influencing. Think about one of the people that he influenced, the, the New York shooter who went to shoot up the train station. You don't know what the impacts of your words are. So you might not have bad intentions, but what you spread to the world could end up being bad. So my thoughts was relief. Now, I wasn't celebrating him. I was not celebrating his death. And even if I was, so what? <laughs> but I wasn't celebrating his death, but I did feel relief. Now, I didn't imagine that it would be death that would happen. And I would never wish death on anyone, you know. Cardiac arrest is the most common cause of death for black people in America, <laughs> period. I don't think anybody would wish death on anyone. But I did feel spiritually that something needs to happen. This cannot go on. And I was shocked to find that it was actually his death, right? But it's not, him dying is not gonna stop it, but I think it is impactful. I think it is impactful because it takes a while to build the platform like the one he built. It takes years. So the next person that wants to be the next Kevin Samuel is gonna take a while for them to become that. 
And either way, everyone's gonna have their own unique voice. So I don't know that there's ever gonna be somebody quite like him, right? And at the same time, I think YouTube needs to do its job. Like, I know it's difficult because there's so many creators on the platform, it's difficult to monitor everything. But YouTube has to be very careful about conversations around domestic violence, child abuse, and all those things to not allow that stuff be promoted on its platform. And someone like Kevin Samuels promoting that on this massive platform that he built for himself, problematic. But we don't have to worry about that. In the meantime, in the meantime, um, so, yeah, I don't blame anyone that's not sad about his death. I don't blame anyone that doesn't care. I don't blame anyone that, but I just know that the first wave of emotion that came through me was relief. It was relief because it was like, I just felt it like this needs to stop. This is not acceptable. And then he goes and dies and it's like, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you know, I understand that he has family, he has friends. I mourn for them. I feel bad for them. Like if nobody wants to lose their friend, you know, but that doesn't mean I feel bad for him. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference. I feel bad for his mom that had to find out on social media. I feel bad for his friends and stuff. But I definitely am glad that his content is not going to be, is not going to continue. He might still have content online and people can still watch it. But those things get archived. After his death, they're not really going to be coming to watch that stuff in two, three years from now. You know, people are not going to be searching for it. There's always, there's so much new stuff posted on, on YouTube every single day. People are going to move on from his content. And perhaps one of these other Manosphere channels will try and do that, but I don't think that they're going to be quite as successful as he was in doing it. <sighs> A few things have happened. <laughs> We're hearing about, you know, there are people report, un, unverified sources, un, Platforms that are not trusted are report like media takeout, right? They're reporting that he died with a thousand dollars in his account. And here's the thing, like, you know, he was flaunting, acting like he was wealthy and all this stuff. He must have been making a lot of money money off of YouTube, but maybe he was going directly into an investment account. Here's the thing that I thought was interesting that somebody brought up. And it was the idea that if he doesn't have a will, right, which he let's remember, this man, it's only in 2020 when he made when he like stepped into a lot of money and it was tip it was around November, 2020. So he hasn't had money for that long, right? His platform, he's, he's making a lot of money in his platform, but it's only been about a year and five months, not up to two years that he's, you know, come into all this money. And I've seen all these Manosphere channels who they were quite close with Kevin Samuels. They talked about how he wasn't able to manage, you know, he had so much going on, you know, the money, like a lot of money was coming in and he wasn't prepared to, you know, how to maintain all the money that was coming in. So it seems as though like life was coming at him fast. He was traveling a lot. There was a lot going on in his life. And they were talking about that in the context of his health, but I want to talk about it in the context of his estate and what's going to happen now, you know, that he's died. So if he, you know, they said uh, unverified, allegedly, allegedly he wasn't living in a, an apartment that was under his name. Right. He came into all this money, but, you know, apparently his credit might have been bad. All these things, you know, he does have a few evictions on his name. People have reported that he doesn't have an LLC in his name, not verified. But I imagine that when it comes to his estate, if he doesn't have an LLC in his name, you know, if he doesn't even have an apartment in his way, I imagine that he probably doesn't have a will because before, prior to 17 months ago, this man didn't really didn't have that much money, right? So I don't imagine that he would have thought quickly, let me create a will, right? I don't, it's, it's unlikely that he has a will. So what does that mean when he doesn't have a will? It means that his estate, all this money that's coming, even on YouTube, it's all going to go to probate. Even digital assets, if you have a YouTube channel, it needs to be assigned. Guys, it's better to own a company Everything should be paid through your company because it improves your taxes and all those things, right? So digital assets also have to be assigned. So right now, all this money might still be coming in, right? But if it's not assigned, it has to go through probate. And what does that mean? Probate takes a minimum of 24 months to process. And think about it, COVID just hit. So there's a backlog of probate, right? So it's going to take a while. And to open a probate case, it's about... 2000 plus dollars. I'll put the number down. 
So his daughter, his mother, for them to even access his estate, it, they're going to have to go jump a lot of hurdles. There's a lot that's going to happen. And it's just, I think if, if anything, it's just a lesson for people to get your house in order, write a will, have a trust, and all these things. I understand that he just came into money, so it's kind of crazy that this, it took this, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm, I, like, hey, I don't know. He might have done something, but the chances that he's put his house in order when his life was spinning so fast, like he's in the, an episode of Atlanta, he did a live with Nicki Minaj, he was a Futures video, I'm sure he was getting all these opportunities that were just being thrown at him, no time to sit down, and he was a one-man team, you know, one of the, I think O'Shea, Duke Jackson, O'Shea Duke Jackson or something, he confirmed that he was a one-man team, he didn't really have a team, and he sort of did everything on his own, so like, I don't imagine that his house was in order, so it looks like it's a mess. It looks like it's going to be a mess. Uh, going to go through probate, probate and all those things. Um, but I guess it's just a lesson for people, uh, set up an LLC. I should get sponsored by this company, but this company called Taylor Brands, you can actually, uh, just go on their website right now and open up an LLC and it doesn't take time at all. Um, and it's quite compared to getting an LLC in most places it's quite affordable. So go check out Taylor Brands for sure. And yeah, so they should sponsor me. All this stuff happened and it happened so fast. So guys, get an LLC, um, have a will or a trust. Like a trust is really, is great because even with a will, you still have to go through probate, but with a trust, you don't have to go through probate. So immediately you, so basically the benefits of a trust is, and that's why they call them trust fund babies because they typically, all their inheritance is put through a trust, but the benefit of a trust, even in your life, when you're alive, having a trust is important because if something happens to you and you get sued, they can't come after you. If like, let's say for example, all your assets are in trusts, right? They're in a trust or a bunch of trusts. If somebody sues you and tries to take everything you're worth, you actually don't own anything. You only, you, all your assets are owned by this trust and you just control the trust. And you can say, once I die, pass this, the ownership of this trust or the control of this trust then goes to X, Y, Z. This is how rich people stay rich, by the way. Rockefeller said this, own nothing, control everything. That's why when you, when you sue rich people or you do whatever to rich people, you don't get much money from them because they don't own anything. Um, and it's all owned by, they control the trust. And so the benefit of having a trust is if somebody dies, um, so, so f first of all, the first benefit is when you're alive, if you get sued, and everything is owned by your trust, they can't take your money, they can't take your house, they can't take anything from you, right? Because you don't own anything, right? But when you die, you could say, once I die, this trust is gonna be owned by this, 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 and that person. So they inherit the trust, and that way you could avoid probate. So that's if you have a, your family, etc. you want them to avoid the whole probate process, you want them to get immediate access to your funds, that's how it works. Um, but I think a lot of, like, we need to be talking about estate planning a lot more in the black community and just in the people in general. There's a lot that we don't know, uh, but this stuff is very important. Um, so it's quite interesting to see how, I mean, we'll never know. It's YouTube. It's not like there's press covering this, so we don't really know how his estate is going to be divided, how much money he really has, his net worth, or anything like that. We really don't know. It's private information. Who knows? You know, there are a lot of YouTubers claiming that he was broke, but I don't think he was broke. We could tell by just looking at his platform that he's making a lot of money. He does all these lives, so he's getting super chats. There's a lot of money that would have been coming in. But what's going to happen to that money now? Well, and even his platform, who's going to be able to log in? So guys, if you own a social media platform, it needs to be run by your company. But those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenem, and see you next time. Peace.